you ever feel like your healing journey is a slog? You know, like you're doing so much work on yourself, but you're not getting anywhere fast. Or maybe you feel like regularly disappointed by the things you try because nothing seems to break those patterns or shift those behaviors. Well, in this week's episode, we're going to look at the two main causes of this experience and why and how you can drop them so that you can speed up your healing journey and feel a sense of progress and purpose again. Let's get to it. Hit it, Kim. Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast. You're in the right place if you're a growth-seeking being who acknowledges the challenges and delights of your humanity on the path to an ever more conscious life. If you want to feel inspired to love and accept yourself, to feel free to be and express you in all your brilliance, if you want to truly value yourself and others and feel energized and alive both at home and in the world, then sit back and take a breath as you explore and grow the brilliance of your beautiful human self with your host, the father of non-personal awareness and creator of the MPA process, Joel Young. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode number 73 of the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. 73, oh my goodness. And if you're brand new here, welcome. I'm really delighted that you're here. You can find the show notes to all of the backlog and everything else at www.beabrillianthuman.com. If you know the episode number, put slash and then the number. So today it will be slash 73. And you can find the show notes, um, extra bits and pieces on those pages. And of course, depending on where you're listening to, if you're listening for the first time on the website, you found me on social media or something, then of course you can always listen via the usual podcast platform. So for example, if you listen on Apple or iTunes or whatever you call that, you can go there and just search Be A Brilliant Human with Joel Young and you'll find the show and you can subscribe. Or even if you're on YouTube, let's just go out on YouTube as well. You can hit that subscribe button. I love it when you do that. It tells the algorithms that we're more worthy <laughs> and tells other people because more people think we're worthy. It's that kind of herd mentality. But that's how it works. So go ahead and hit subscribe. And what's in it for you if you hit the subscribe button? Well, you'll be told when the next episode comes out. So you can pop me back in your ears, so to speak, and uh, and listen to more of these musings. So I'd love if you do that. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And if you're back for more, you know I love you. Uh, And it is a great privilege to be in your ears for about half an hour every week. How fantastic. I love you for that. So what's on the cards today? Well, it's come about because really it's a topic that sort of come, I guess, front and center in my practice, working one to one with people and also in the groups that I've been working with um, as something which keeps raising its head. And I thought, well, that's something I really need to talk about on the podcast It's something which can really be a a demotivator, I guess. Something which is a hurdle, is a a cause of irritation. Anyone who's on the healing path or the awakening journey or whatever you want to call this wonderful path of conscious growth, um, it's something which, which people find very difficult. And there's two specific angles I want to take on it and talk about how you can drop that. Um, And... But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the MPA process. So if you're brand new, you probably haven't heard what that is. MPA stands for non-personal awareness. And it popped out of me back in 2007. It's a six line, simple spoken word process that helps you not take things personally. Beyond that, the MPA philosophies and so much more really are the resistance free way, which means that you can start to live a life where rather than being like that old frying pan where, you know, you put the put the stuff in it and then it sticks (laughs) and you end up spending hours with a scrubbing brush just to try and get it clean and it never get quite gets clean where life sticks to you Um, you can be someone who's like a shiny sexy new teflon pan where you can just throw stuff in it cook it beautifully and then it just tips out and it's almost already clean Um, that's the possibility with mpa and you can get hold of the mpa process for absolutely free for absolutely free for absolutely nothing for free one of those two um, if you go, well, you can go to the show notes for today or anywhere on uh, beabrilliantheuman.com. You can also find it on my main website, which is Joel Young NPA. That's November Papa Alpha, by the way, dot com. 
And yeah, you can go ahead and get hold of that. That's a great resource for you to have. And again, if you're new to the show, if you're, if, if you're not new to the show, you know this stuff, right? And have you downloaded it yet? Have you? Well, you haven't? Well, go and do it. Come on. Um, but it, you know that I talk about it a lot on this show in terms of um, sharing some of the perspectives um, and so it's great to have it there so you can you can you can know what I'm talking about and and use it at times. So let's do this thing. So let's just get in there, shall we? <laughs> I think that the biggest thing that I see that has people who are on this awakening healing journey feeling a, a sense of a lack of progress, feeling like a failure, um, you know, disappointment, uh, like they're not doing it right, uh, not as good as others, if you like, or, 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 or a sense of the, the sustainability of, of really moving forward just, just dies. And the, the core of it really is expectation, the expectations that we have. We have expectations of ourselves. We have expectations of the processes. We have expectations of time, expectations of our body. You know, it's it's so many expectations. Now, of course, I can't list them all. It's such a huge thing. And it's, it's often the case when I've got like 30 minutes in your ear here. I like to break it down into kind of manageable, understandable chunks. So it's really sort of two two ways that I see expectations come up in a ruinous way um when it comes to the healing journey so it's kind of expectations about the results and expectations about the path how we get there so we start if we start with results expectations about results is really about you know we have predefined results ideas of of what it looks like if we have success now, our minds are powerful things. If we have an idea, a picture that we're stuck to in our brain about um, about what what needs to happen in order for us to sort of enter the world where our brains are saying we're having progress um, and we don't meet the expectation, then the way the neurology works is, is it, it becomes um, conflicted. Uh, there's times that we can even make progress and yet because it doesn't meet an expectation we kind of sabotage ourselves because you know what the thinker thinks the prover proves so we haven't met these predefined results therefore we're a failure therefore this hasn't worked that hasn't worked and there's no openness in us really um, to really look at and focus on where the progress is um, things that that I'll, I'll hear often in terms of you know how those uh, results need to be defined it will say well you know i need to be rid of this or totally healed in order to to have any sense of success that's a ridiculous expectation and yet it seems perfectly normal it's like a it's a perfectly good measure you know when that behavior completely changes and it never ever comes back again then i've succeeded uh, but it's actually an unrealistic expectation it certainly doesn't promote progress in the meantime um, that may happen. I have a different view, which we'll get to. <laughs> but certainly, there are times when we get so so. Uh, the idea is that when it's com when it doesn't exist in our life at all, that's the only thing which will tell us we've made some success. And it's a horrible self beration most of the time. And so, and, and often, one thing that 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 can do is is I hear people say literally these words on a regular basis. I thought I dealt with this shit. <laughs> I've done so much work and it's the same pattern it's going back again and again oh my god um you know i'm feeling like a failure when actually they're missing the progress that they're making um another way that i see it come up is is that we have a kind of this this means that kind of uh sense of of how things play out so in in terms of def we can get very very specific in defining what success or progress looks like so i remember um a long time ago more towards the beginning of mpa when i was doing some follow-up calls after um one of the seminars that i did and um at the seminar at that time i was i was teaching the mpa programs in the seminar you can now get get hold of those through the mpa advanced training um i teach the programs in there that they're, they're a way to really work consistently over time um to work with particularly stubborn or ingrained patterns and um, part of that teaching is me talking about my experience of shifting my relationship to food. And one of the participants of that seminar had, had sort of gone, OK, I want to do that. And, and in her own way, she'd 
she looked at using one of the programs to um, to shift her relationship to food. So on this kind of follow up call, which was towards the end of where those programs would have finished, um, I got the sense from her. I mean, this was this was before video, so she kind of it was audio, but I got that sense like her arms were crossed. Right? <laughs> How did it go? I'm saying, so, well, it didn't work. I'm like, okay, just tell me tell me what your experience was because I'd seen these kind of things before. And she said, well, the cravings are still there. I said, okay, what, what was your intent? She said, well, I wanted to shift my relationship to food, ultimately to, to lose some weight. Um, but, you know, the cravings are, haven't gone, so I know it didn't work. And that's like a red flag to me, okay? So I said, okay, so the cravings have gone. So walk me through this. Before you had cravings and then you would, I don't know, stuff your face. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And what happens now? So the cravings come you stuff your face and she sort of paused and went, well, no, no, I, I don't succumb to the cravings now, but the cravings are still there. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, let's just look at that for a moment. There you are telling yourself that what you did didn't work. It wasn't good enough. Nothing works for you. There's been no change. But what you're telling me is that while the cravings are still there, which was your the, the thing you had really stuck to is the the, the measure of success, but actually you're not succumbing to them. Do you think that's a shift in relationship to food? Well, yes. Do you think that's going to ha- ultimately, as that continues forward, um, you know, go towards your ultimate goal of, of losing weight? Well, yes, she said. <laughs> and she realized that she'd been holding herself in this place where the thinking mind was going, it didn't work, it's, it's a failure, which perhaps if she hadn't caught it, I can't know this for sure, but perhaps would have had her ultimately sabotaging that progress. But but once she realized that she could let go of the idea that the, the signal of success was cravings going, um, she was open to where the actual progress was, which in turn helped her feel like she was on the path and that is a much more sustainable opening and ultimately more progressive mindset and way forward. So sometimes we can get very stuck in these ideas of what results look like. And, you know, I see it all the time um, in, in MPA because MPA is one of those modalities, you know, where you can do the words and there's kind of an expectation within the personal development world that, that you know you're going to get some kind of sense of an emotional shift or um or a quick result based on on what you <laughs> what you think's going to happen um and that's often the case with mpa but there are times when that isn't the case because mpa non-personal awareness if i was to speak that in terms of uh, the quantum physicists they'd say there's sometimes a non-local response sometimes the response happens outside of yourself um, if you've ever come across Ho'oponopono, um, which sort of comes from almost the opposite end, but ultimately speaks to the same phenomena, which is that, um, and I'm not going to go into what that is, but look it up. Um, but essentially the point of it is that, that you can do that work within yourself and have an impact somewhere else in, in somebody else. Because of the energetic nature of us, that it isn't always so directed. And yet the sort of, the, the dogmatic sort of ideas in our world is that you have some kind of indication internally that you have done the process right it's been a success something's happened and most of the time that's true but it isn't always true and and as you come into the world of mpa you start to get very comfortable with it you know um, you have that or you don't have that it it, it doesn't matter you can do the process and, and move forward and ultimately the results if you're open to them and don't get stuck to some idea about them uh, will tend to show themselves which in turn creates that positive forward moving momentum which is fantastic okay so that's kind of the results aspect let's talk about the the other side of where expectations can get in the way which is expectations about the path so what do i mean by that well we we get into these dogmatic ideas about you know what needs to happen in order to move forward one of the most sort of classic ones there is you know i need to heal my history i need to sort out my childhood issues in order to change now that is there because there's been a lot of incredible work and i'm a big fan of doing what they might call inner child work But the difference here is the idea that that's a wonderful, possible and sometimes the most magical way to 
facilitate change, it isn't always the case. And if you get stuck into that rut, that dogmatic sense of my expectation is that until I look at this stuff in my past, I can't change my patterns, then you're instantly closing down your options and 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 setting yourself up for that disappointment, setting yourself up for failure, setting yourself up for that negative spiral into, you know, demotivation and and self beration. So, um, I mean, this is exactly one of the things that I've seen, um, especially in the last year, with my one to one clients, where often they come with an, a sort of a dogmatic expectation of what is needed for them to get the results that they want to get. And if you ever come and see me one to one, and I highly recommend you do, <laughs> I've better put looking for that now. Um, but but one of the things that I believe in working one to one with people, and this is what we do in the advanced training, and coming up later this year, we're going to do the professional training, the practitioners training. Is I'm someone who absolutely is about dropping the agenda, dropping the dogma, and really being available to where the natural path is. And so much of the time, especially people who've been shrouded in um, you know, the, the 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 dogma of personal development, spirituality, that kind of thing. It just isn't in those areas. I'm not saying there aren't times where it goes there. It certainly does. Um, but to give you an example, you know, they those these clients come along and they've got these high expectations, a sense of uselessness and failure, and they're banging away doing these things that they think they're supposed to do that will make the difference. But on investigation, when you really open and you drop all of that stuff, what I often find is it, it's about bringing it back to the tiny things that really matter. And rather than aiming for those those big breakthroughs and those massive process moments, all of which can come along, um, when you find out those little things that matter and just do them and have the success of that, you start to get on that track where it is instantly you get a win. And when you get a win, you want to get another win. And, and little incremental steps um, actually end up with things shifting faster. A lot of these people who end up seeing me have seen loads of other therapists and, and just gone around in this cycle. Um, and, and then they come and I throw all that out the water, out, out, out the window, out the window, in the water, out the window. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm just fumbling my words. But we throw that, you know, out and get really still and find what truly matters. So it might be something like just take 15 minutes for you a day. Now, in some cases, especially if they're busy mums or uh, or busy career people, um, that 15 minutes a day seems like a big thing. But they recognize that when we talk it through, that's actually really what they need, because in that time, um, which isn't just about, okay, I'll take 15 min minutes in front of the telly necessarily or um, or something like that. It's like intentional um, stopping and having time for them so they can figure out what matters. Once they actually start doing it, maybe over a week or something, then everything else starts to fall into place. Because while they were chasing fixing the childhood or figuring out what the, what the pattern was or, or all this other stuff, they were missing the blindingly obvious in front of them. Well, it's obvious with hindsight, right? But <laughs> they're missing what really matters. That's my point here. And by doing that, it starts to get their system running smoothly rather than being bombarded, not just with all the, the stuff that's going on in their lives, but bombarded by um, these dogmatic ideas about what they need to do in order to heal, to grow, to change things, to make things better. So that's a big part of what I see in the in terms of the the expectations about how it needs to happen. And, you know, it, this is how it should go. This is how it should be. This is what I have to do in order to make the changes. When you can drop those expectations, you become very available to, to what it is that that, that really matters and those little tiny, wonderfully, sometimes very simple things that actually are going to be where you've got your leverage to start making a difference and most importantly, getting on a track which is sustainable and filled with success. So the second thing that I want to talk about is comparison. So really I come to this 
in a way it's very linked because often I find that these expectations are born from comparison. Or well, you could say that comparison is the is the source of many of our expectations. So we, we're herd animals fundamentally. We like to look around and see what others are doing and take our lead from that. Even if we're leaders, there's there's some sense that we take a lead from the the, the, the wider energy of the herd. So that there's it's naturally kind of baked into our humanity. Nevertheless, when it comes to our healing path, our healing journey, um, comparison is is a is a what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, I'm seeing like a Catherine with like a firework. It, <laughs> it throws out sparks that can hook onto our expectations. You know, we look at others and see them doing things a certain way and think that's the way it is. Now, it's not that it's never the case. Often, one person's way works for a lot of people. Like, for example. MPA came through me and it's working for thousands and thousands of people around the world. But there's always the the unique, you know, the unique aspect of our path and where we get into comparisons uh, in a way that means it it diminishes our own truth, our own perspective, our own authority in things. That's where it can give birth to expectations which have no business being in in our heads. In fact, I you know I I did a meme a couple of years ago and I'd found I looked it up and found it out. It's it's a quote I I do enjoy I must say, which is misery stews. Well, I'll start that again with my teeth in misery stews in the cauldron of comparison, <laughs> which is that's my experience. Well, the other side of it is while smiles simmer in the saucepan of self acceptance. So the self acceptance here really is about accepting you know your own path, your own pace, really. Um, some of the ways that I see sort of comparisons come along is so one area is is the sort of the big breakthrough comparison. So we kind of live in a culture where you know big and fast is you know is like revered as you know some kind of success. And certainly the way that you know in my I guess training I was kind of reared in my career um, in a world where kind of big breakthroughs were really sort of applauded and there's nothing wrong with big breakthroughs but what it can do in that kind of culture is make you belittle the tiny tiny shifts and this is one of the things I want to to instill in you or impart or at least or at least offer you this perspective um, today is I'm a now a great believer in focusing on those little tiny shifts because I found that Rather than sort of having this big breakthrough mindset, the little tiny shifts over time, those big shifts, you know, they come along. You know, when you hear stories of these miracles and these big shifts, it's not or it's very rarely, I'm not going to say never, but it very rarely is without a lot of stuff that's happened before it. Right. (laughs) And yet if we go into our healing journey and, and if we don't get the big breakthrough, then we fail. That's where the comparison is, is a real hindrance and it, that, that whole mindset again sort of comes in like a shadow and slows down and, and bogs down our, our healing path um, and the same goes you know I talk about the small incremental changes big breakthroughs often go hand in hand with instant change you know if I go to this weekend if I do this process then suddenly you know this thing is going to change well there will come a time where it's suddenly <laughs> that one thing <laughs> It was that. That was the cause of it. Um, but it, but ultimately, it, change tends to be over time. Now, I'm not saying there's never discrepancies in that because there's that there often is. There, just like anything in life, it's cyclical. It's like it's made. We're made of energy and waves. There are short waves and long waves. And in our healing journey and our process through life, some things are going to be on the long wave and then maybe later on the short wave. And other things are going to be on the short wave now and then later on the long wave. So again, but as long as there's these expectations born from comparisons, well, it only took this person a week and they were completely free of all addictions. Well, fantastic. But that might not be your path. It might not be the pace that your system works, at least not in relation to that particular issue. So the comparison is is often very harmful to us rather than going, OK, I'm going to honor my own pace, my own path. You know what it is that where it is that I am, what's my next natural step. Um, and, and again, going back to what I said in the expectations part, which is to celebrate those those wins and look for where the progress is. And the other one that, that I think 
is important this is kind of a blend really of expectation and comparison because the comparison comes in it's the idea that there there should be um you know there's not going to be failure again i'm using this in the comparison part really because again like the culture of big and fast we're also in a culture where for the most part um failure is like a pariah it's like you just cannot have failure and the truth is that no no progress has ever been made <laughs> without failure along the way you know even if it's just not personal failure you know the path of some cultural change is in the back of all sorts of you know horribly misguided deeds and actions and thoughts which you could put in that i'm going to use big heavy quotes around that word failure um but you know part part of how we are biologically and emotionally is is we are iterative creatures we we do iterations of of different things some of which don't work until we find one that works and then we move forward and then at some point that might not work and so we go through different iterations until we find something that works that you know failure or things not working as expected um is embedded and and um what's the word i'm looking for i'm not out of time of words today is like enmeshed with with life itself you know it's like night and day you know success and failure it's like it's 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 all part of it and ultimately for me it comes down to you know where you draw the line is how you experience it so for me i've kind of redefined the idea of failure <laughs> So I kind of get to the point where there isn't failure, but that I can acknowledge that that didn't work or or that isn't quite there yet. Um, but ultimately, I guess it's about just really looking at um, where the where you can find the success and progress in the moment. But if you've got a mindset of failure is not an option or failure in a way that makes things not being perfect all the time out the gate um, makes it bad in some way then that's where you're going to get into into dodgy territory with your expectations and again I think that's born from comparison in terms of comparing ourselves to the um, the crazy ideological um, ideas in our culture <laughs> so let me see if I can sum this up with Sort of put these ideas together and, and how you might look at things in a different way that will help you to get onto that more sustainable path or at least help you head off at the pass some of those um those things that may be slowing down your healing journey or certainly feeling like make it feeling like as make it feel like a slog at the moment and also maybe give you an action that you could uh, potentially take um, to put this into practice. So I guess sort of moving backwards a bit, the first thing is to be aware of comparisons. How are you comparing yourself to uh, to others and how their healing journey is looking? Again, in terms of time frames, in terms of you know what is considered a success or a failure, uh, in terms even of what tools or um, approaches they're using or how they're thinking. It's I'm not talking about closing yourself off from other people's experience because we can all learn from each other, but it's about bringing it back and really honoring your own path. Certainly in terms of pace, I think pace is one of the biggest things. You know, it, 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 it's it's okay to be slower than somebody else. And it's sometimes it's, it's like, <laughs> sometimes it's difficult for people to be fast if they're like, that. they have super fast transformations. That can be an issue. I found that a lot in the beginning with MPA. I started using MPA and I found that the changes were happening actually really, really quickly. Um, I now understand it's because it takes away the resistance and then that tends to move things forward. Um, and I had times where people were going, well, how can you get over that so quick? And I was like, well, I'm just doing what I teach. <laughs> um, so either way, again, the comparisons were, oh, maybe I shouldn't be OK with that so quickly. Uh, but why are we doing this? You know, um, but that isn't to say, again, quicker is better than than slower. It's really the only way that things got faster for me was because I stopped having those big expectations and just let it flow in its natural order. Um, that's how it worked for me. So, yeah, be mindful of the comparisons. Um, and within that, you know, when you start looking for the progress rather than the the expectations not being met you know where is the progress you can start celebrating the the small wins those big ones we all have a big miracle a big win a big breakthrough a very noticeable change um those things they in my experience they come along 
Um, but when you try and focus on them exclusively, you're taking steps that are out of your reach and wonder why you fall flat on your face again and again, which makes no progress. So celebrate those small wins. Um, and then I did say I was going to address, you know, when we have that, you know, I, I thought I dealt with this shit again, the failure around that. So I want to offer you a perspective on that, which is the way that I look at things. One of part of the non-personal philosophy is that core patterns can be signals. We don't necessarily get rid of them, but it's really the whole non-personal way of looking at things. When you get into MPA and start using it, this kind of starts to sort of um, install itself into you. Um, is that we we shift our relationship to it and seeing our sort of core patterns, those things that maybe you've you just can't get rid of. You start seeing them as signals and make them your friends. You realize really what they're saying to you often is that not that they'll ever completely go away, but when it comes to where you meet your edge, when it comes to an experience where what you're doing is taking you into stressful territory, these are the behavioral signals that just give you feedback, just like pain does when you stub your toe, um, that you need to be more mindful and address these things. That's a whole different mindset. This is probably a whole other topic, really, but a um, whole different mindset to to your healing path and your healing journey than trying to get rid of these things and feeling like a constant failure. Um, and then when we get on to the, the whole area of, you know, the, the, the predefined results and the predefined path, well, if you go back to episode two, there's the second episode I ever did. I did it very deliberately. It's um, it's the five point blueprint for growth. Episode two, I'll, I'll link it in the show notes uh, or you can go to beabringhuman.com slash two. That also works. Um, one of the things that I talk about in there, I mean, it's embedded is that sense of wonder, that sense of discovery and taking those tiny baby steps. They're all part of how I see the, the, the most efficient, effortless easy and often faster way of embarking on your healing journey because it embraces failure it gives you that laboratory mindset you know where the, the scientist never expect you know he, he does a thousand experiments and goes eureka you know when when one comes good so there isn't this this mindset around um trying something and it not working out as expected it doesn't become a bad thing and uh, and then finally, I think in my, my points I've got here is, again, um, just to remember, I sort of said this earlier, but but we live a life as energetic beings, ultimately, physicalized expressions of energy. Um, and all energy that teaches us, we teach, is t- taught to us by nature, with the cycles of nature. Um, it's, it's shown to us throughout all of our life that the nature of energy is it goes up, it goes down, and it goes up and it goes down at different speeds. Speeds mean, you know, a long wave is a slower speed of uh, of waveform than the ones that are close together. They're going up and down quicker, so they're closer together. And so when you when you sort of hold that idea in your mind, um, you recognize that there's always going to be peaks and there's always going to be troughs. And in fact, part of it, if you're on a long wave, there may be plateaus. So again, in MPA, we look at it as as allowing for that in our healing journey. MPA is a relational model. It recognizes that, that a relationship matures over time. We, we're changing, not getting rid of stuff. That's so binary. It doesn't, it doesn't speak the language of energy. Energy is about shifting the relationships, but the connection between things and our conscious self and our relationship to our behaviors, our emotions, our identity. Um, this is, a you know, and the various issues and signals in our life is like any relationship. You know, it matures over time. Sometimes it feels great. Sometimes it's a bit meh. You know, sometimes it plateaus out and then you'll have a, you know, romantic high again. And um, that's the nature of all of life, really. And if you can approach your um, your healing journey with with that mindset, then you're going to be a long way to having the energy su- that support you underlie that, the energy of progress, success over time, even amongst the things that don't seem to be working. And that's been my experience of what makes the biggest difference in allowing you to have the most effortless, resistance-free, 
um, smooth ride on this wonderful magical ride that's the healing journey uh, and I hope you can embrace them which brings me to the last thing which is I thought what can I what can I suggest one thing you could do you could try today and I'm going back to the to, to what often happens with my clients which is finding that one often seemingly small or even tiny thing that truly matters to you so just think about what's the seemingly small, tiny thing that, that truly matters. And that's the tricky bit sometimes, what truly matters. And commit to that for a week. So let me give you some examples. So often in my practice, it's encouraging my clients to take time for themselves. Um, and again, it's not something I just say dogmatically. I I reflect this back to them because it, it's obvious and it comes out of their mouths, right? Um but so it may be that that's that that's there for you is that just taking 15 minutes a day or, or or whatever feels right to do something you love that matters to you if you're someone who has a really busy life and, and feels like they are um called upon from every direction that could be something that that actually rather than doing um and it's, this time isn't about necessarily doing process work, taking time to, to do process work. It could be if that's what works, but it's like, what is it that really is going to recharge you? <laughs> what is it that's going to really connect to you and commit to that? It might take five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever feels like is doable given your life. That's one potential suggestion. Um, or it might be, you know, um, that you, when you inquire into it, what matters to you is, is you know, maybe you're someone who, for example, like the people that come along and do boundary boot camp. Often, the boundary boot camp is about having strong boundaries. People who say yes when they mean no. So maybe you take a step in that direction and st start saying, okay, the thing that's really going to matter to me is is starting to say no to something that you normally say yes to. Now, again, don't go for necessarily for the big win. What's a tiny, easy win? A really easy, tiny, small that, that would barely, would, you know, because often if we've got boundary issues, then we're afraid of if we do um, start saying no rather than yes, then there's all sorts of scary consequences. And if you want to deal with that in full, then then go and check out Boundary Bootcamp. I'll, I'll link that as well. But again, um the mpacademy.com slash boundary hyphen bootcamp lowercase. I'm starting to learn these URLs. Um, anyway, again, I digress. But yeah, it, the point here is to find the little thing where where saying no, where you've been, where you want to say no, but have been saying yes, is an area where it's a it's a small thing, but you can have the experience of getting to a point where you can start to feel in yourself uh, the impact of honoring yourself rather than um you know denying yourself in some way or don't deny the truth of yourself so again here's the action just to make it clear find one seemingly small maybe even tiny thing that truly matters to you and commit just to trying that out for a week and it's probably not going to be what you expect and of course if you want help with that you can always uh, go and look at my one-to-one -one session page i do have a couple of spaces at the moment so uh, you can go to joelyoungmpa.com slash sessions and have a look at that you can always just, just book a, a 10 minute call with me we can have a quick chat and just uh, check that you know it, it's going to work for you and and then you can book some sessions with me if you'd like sort of some professional help um, and support in that way. So go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I think we're done for today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've enjoyed sharing these perspectives. Uh, remember, if you haven't already, to hit that subscribe button. If you like what you've heard, go and tell someone about it. Nothing spreads the word better than, well, spreading the word. Um, and let people know about this show and we can continue to grow in the way that we have already. Fantastic. That's it. Have a beautiful week coming forward. Um, I will see you next time. And all that remains is to cue the moo. Mm -hmm.